Salutations gamers, I'm the OGG Game, and today I'm going to be discussing backgrounds in our animation tutorial today. Now, it's, um, if you've been following along with the other animation tutorials so far, I've been talking about a lot of the tools, or I've been talking about, uh, in the last episode I talked about basic lip animation and how it's all done, as well as switch layers and such like that, but today I'm not going to be talking about any tools, I'm just going to be talking about fundamentals of background making. Okay? Now, so I'm going to open up, so I have Anime Studio opened up here, and I'm going to start discussing that. So, <clears throat> the first thing that you need to understand about making a background is, well, most of the time when people refer to a background, they're referring to a background in the wrong way. Most people sort of refer to the background as everything, not the characters, basically. You have the characters up front talking or doing whatever they're doing, and the background is like everything else. But that's not really true. Everything else that is not your main focus is the scene. Or at least that's what I call it, the scene. The scene is, you know, the scene is the ground, it's the mountains in the back, it's the sky, it's the characters walking behind the main characters, or whatever. Scene. It's the scene where, where everything is taking place. And that's and the reason why I say that is because um, people refer to the and uh, I know it seems kind of you know nitpicky to say like oh scene not background or whatever 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 right sounds kind of nitpicky but I'm going to explain exactly why um, I'm, I'm the thing about the background is the background is one third of what makes up a scene basically a scene is made up of a background a foreground and a midground and all that together creates a depth of field. I'm going to try to explain what depth, uh, creating a depth of field basically is. Basically is. Okay, so, first of all, to do this, I'm going to start off with a city. Okay? So, we're going to create a vector. We're going to call this... Mm, let's just call it city and keep everything on the same vector. Now, we uh, obviously, we sh probably should be layering things, but let's just keep it all on ones because we're going to be using minimalism to explain this. So, with depth of field, let's create a square, okay? And we're going to change its color, or rectangle, sorry, not square. What am I saying? I'm going to change its color to a deep gray, like that, okay? Okay. And we're just going to make several of these around like this like that okay just like so okay we're going to remove these strokes on them you're going to start to understand in a second here okay so if we are creating a scene this is the background of the scene okay Let's say that this is the background. Remember, we're using minimalism. We're not using, you know, big complicated scenes or all kinds of scenery and stuff like that. So, but but now we have a midground area, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we create this. Now let's change this to a slightly lighter color. Okay, I hope you're starting to see where I'm going with this. All right. Slightly lighter color in the front. Okay. And one more right about here. All right. So now we have the midground area. So now you're starting to see what I'm trying to get at here. In fact, actually, I'm going to get that a bit smaller and bring it down just to have a different... Uh, just have the levels a bit different. So you have the back, so in a scene, now you're starting to see you have the background, then a midground, and then you have the foreground, which would be on top of everything. So we take this color right here, make it lighter than the midground, about that color. Oh dear me, my mouse is starting to bug out on me, but I got it. Okay, there we go. Oops, it's bugging out on me. Oh dear, oh, ah crap. I don't know why my mouse is bugging out on me, I think. Let me just, 
Let me uh check my Ah, there we go. Okay, there it goes. It it fixed itself. My my CP usage was up. There there's processes that run in the background that can make that happen. So now so now I hope you're seeing what I'm talking about. So so now we have using minimalism, we have this like very basic looking city, right? Okay. And this isn't a background, this is a scene. The background is this darkest area here, then you have the midground and then the foreground, and it all makes up a scene, which is the city. You have this city area. Okay? Makes sense? I hope it makes sense. And so, because a lot of people sort of... The, uh, the, the, the reason why I emphasize, you know, thinking about a background differently than uh, thinking about a scene instead of it as a background is because it's important to remember that there is the depth of field. And the depth of field can really set apart a background. Even if you're using something that's very, very minimalist, just a very minimalist looking background area like I'm doing here, even just doing this, you are still creating a depth of field and it sets it apart and makes the world feel more alive, right? Because you have layers to everything. Now I'm going to do something real quick. I'm just going to add a, I'm just going to have some little blocks that I'm going to use and create these windows that I want. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to talk about a good, a good thing with depth of field is as you see here, what I'm doing uh, well, not this specifically, but notice how the things that are further back are darker and it gets lighter as it moves forward. That is a really good way to create a depth of field, in my opinion. And it's it's a very common little trick that people uh, that people like like to use, just having darker and darker and then moving lighter. It's very simple and it's very and it's easy to understand, which is why I'm uh, using it to help you understand depth of field. But there's a lot of ways that you can create the depth of field without using darker and lighter. There's even actually a reverse of this where you have lighter in the back and it moves to the darker. But it's really all up to you how you wanna how you wanna do it. But it's important to create that depth of field. And again, the the simplest way that you can do that is by, well, just very, very, very easily just having darker go to lighter. And as you see here, now we have this very basic, very basic blocky looking city, but it still has that depth of field. So despite it being very minimalist, it's still, you can still tell what this is supposed to be, which is important. And it has, uh, it has, um, the depth of field, which allows it to feel more lively, like it's actually, like it's actually almost there, you see? Like, the, uh, you know, it's creating a world. Now I'm going to take this city, and I'm going to make it smaller, and move it over here. Now I'm going to show you more. So, let's say we wanted this city, which we've already created a depth of field with, and, but now let's say we want this city to actually be part of the background, and then we're going to create a midground and foreground in front of it, or something like that. But anyway, before we get into that, let's go to layer one and rename it to Sky. Because something that you should always have if you're doing any kind of scene on the outside is you definitely need to have a sky. And this is always the, the furthest back background, and usually... But anyway, again, remember, there's always depth to everything when you're creating like backgrounds or scenes as I'm as I'm calling them again. So let's just select that color and let's create this a gradient. Remember I told you about gradients, but this time we're going instead of doing a linear gradient like we did for the eyes, for the pony bases that we were creating, we're gonna do a radial. And do I have the color selected? I do. Good, good. Oh, nope, that's that's something completely different. My bad, sorry. Let me just select this color. Copy that. Okay. Then we, then we give it that color. Remember, we want it to be radial. We're going to change this color to a 
very light yellowish color. Okay, we're going to move this up to here and extend it outwards like so. But then we're going to go back in and we're actually going to create, we're going to move this forward a lot and we're going to move this to be about here and create another color right about here which is going to be a significantly deeper yellow like that. Move this even more forward. And there. Now we've created a very basic looking sky where we have a sun off in the corner. And yeah, so now, now you're seeing that you've, you've it's very simply with uh, again, we're just using minimalism to explain everything. You know, you've created a very basic sun, you've created a little city. And let's just create let's just create something on top of all this. So let's let's create a mid-ground area that's going to be like a valley, and then we even make a bit of a foreground area, but let's let's just call this ground. Okay. And we're going to do it here, like so. We're going to make this plain because it automatically has the same effect as what you had previously. Remove the stroke, grab the fill, and let's make this... Um, Let's just make it that color. That's a that's a decent looking color. I'm actually going to give it a little bit of blue tint to it. Right about there-ish. Okay. Simple enough. We're going to add a hump there. Move this down. Oh, actually we need that to be about right there-ish. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you're getting the idea. Hopefully you're getting the idea. And then let's, um, and actually, I want this to be darker. But before I get into that, I'm going to create a second one of these. Flip it around. Make it significantly smaller. Put it right about here. But we want this to come up above that. Like this. All right, all right. I'm just trying to create the depth of field with these valleys. And make this one in the back a darker color. Okay. And now hopefully you see, now you have like, now you're starting to, I hope you're starting to understand. So with a the scene, there's a lot of depth of field and that's what I'm trying to get, trying to get at. Again, just very minimalist, but we're creating depth of field. You have the little city here. And you have the depth of field for the city because the obviously there's not just one line of buildings, which oftentimes I think uh, I've seen that before where people like they, they draw a city or something like just very basic like or maybe they try to be more complicated and maybe they're really good at drawing the, the buildings or whatnot, but they do the same thing where they have just one line of buildings. But that's not how a city is. They have a bunch of buildings all over the place. And some cities have more uniform buildings, but they still have buildings behind other buildings. So you create a depth of field. And with, you know, with a valley or the ground or whatever, you have, you know, sort of hills that come up behind the other hills and hills that kind of stand in front of it. And so you're creating this depth of field. It's very important that you create that depth of field because even just a very basic looking minimalist background like this we've still managed to create something that looks, you know, it looks like it has depth to it. It looks like, you know, it's almost like a world. Now, um, these actually, there, there's a lot of shading elements that you should be working on. Using your gradients, you should have actually like lighting effects where the lighting is brighter on the side facing the sun and then becomes darker as it goes away. But again, just we're just just going over very basic basic stuff and of course remember something that a lot of people forget to do when creating like a sky is that there's stuff in the sky if it's nighttime there's going to be stars and the moon if it's daytime there's going to be the sun and there's going to be clouds unless for whatever reason there's just no clouds whatsoever that day which can happen but for the most part most of the time 
things have clouds. That's just the thing that happens. And so I'm just going to show you, just going to make one cloud, just one cloud, just add a singular cloud. Tag now, but <laughs> it's using the gradient effect. Get out of here. Just a singular cloud. Actually, we want the stroke. The stroke to be a very, very light grayish color. The fill, we want that to be a completely white. And hopefully this is making sense. I'm just, it's just very simple stuff. Very simple stuff. Okay. Okay. Like this, kind of. Oops, my mouse is going a little haywire again. That's fine, that's fine, it'll smooth itself out. Oh, dang it! don't do that to me. Okay, and just to make this thing look more like a cloud, because this is not what a cloud really looks like, we can just, we can just, actually, I'm going to need to cut that and put it into its own vector called cloud, because I'm going to have to change some things about it. We're going to go in here, just create a blur. Again, just double click on your vectors and create a blur. Blur basically does exactly what it sounds like. It just blurs it. It takes all of what you cre it takes all of it and it just kind of blurs it on its edges. The higher the blur number, the more blurred it is. If I render that to show you, you'll see it's blurred. It's kind of blurred. But the cloud is a little thick, so actually we're going to bring up the blur a bit higher. So let's bring it up to like 15 and bring down opacity to about 80 maybe, and let's see how that looks. There now you're starting to see a bit more of, of the cloud that you want. See? It's kind of got that cloud's kind of like blurred, foggy, because basically all a cloud is is a fog that's up in the sky, and you can see it. And it has a bit, and it's a bit more uniform looking in the sky, but if it was on the ground it's just a big old fog. But yeah, so hopefully this makes sense, and again, you would want to shade a lot of this stuff. But this is basically how basic background making works. I'll add one more thing here to the foreground, the top of the ground, just to, because I have it in my library. So obviously, again, though, you wouldn't want to, if you're going to make a background for animating, my big suggestion to you is do not make a background straight out of the animation program, just whatever, you should try to draw up a base for everything. You should try to draw some kind of a base for it first. You know, you would want to say, um, okay, well, I'm going to need some trees, so you want to draw out what the trees look like, and then make those into their, uh, and, and it, or, I mean, you could draw out the entire scene on paper, or maybe you have a program where you have, like, a graphics tablet, and you can draw out the scene and something else. But I highly recommend, don't do a mouse and keyboard kind of making a scene by hand like I did here. Again, I'm just using very minimalist stuff to, to, just, to show you the scene, but when making an actual scene, I highly suggest drawing it in some way before you ever get to actually creating the different parts of it for animating. Just like, uh, just... The exact same with creating a character. Draw the character before you ever go into actually trying to create it in the program. Whether using Flash or Anime Studio like I am. Draw it out beforehand. Now, okay, let's see. Ooh, I have trees. Nope, not those ones. Those ones are for something else. Where is it? I should have it. Not wood. Couch. No, blue tree. I'm just going to add a blue tree to my scene. Just like that. Just add it into the foreground. Create another one. Flip it around. Not that way. This way. Make it a bit bigger. Right. So yeah. Yeah, and if you have, like, if you ever make something like trees for another background or something, I highly recommend, like, if you do something complicated like trees, sky and clouds, that sort of stuff, pretty simple, easy to replicate. Something like a tree, though, if you make, like, vectors or something for, like, a tree, I highly recommend that you, I don't know how you would do it in Flash, but in Anime Studio, you would save 
that sort of thing to the library. I highly recommend that you do save those vectors, uh, if you can, uh, to be used as props later on, because it can really help if you're trying to make, you know, a lot, if, if you have to make, like, a lot of scenes for something or whatnot, or it, it just helps make things faster sometimes to just have multiple trees or whatever. So anyway, I hope you, um, I hope this all makes sense. If there's any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I will try to answer them as best as I can. I know that when trying to explain everything, I try to get as much out of the way as possible, like trying to give you as much detail as I can, and oftentimes that leads me to forget certain things. So, yes, please leave comments uh, asking me any questions that you need help with, like about the backgrounds, obviously not other things. Any questions you have about creating backgrounds, I, I'm not the best when it comes to backgrounds, but I can do them all the same, so, but yeah, yeah, just set, give me comments. So, anyway, if you like this video, please hit like on it. So, uh, if you want to see more of this, subscribe. I, I do an animation tutorial every week. Otherwise, I also do gameplay videos all the other days. Please uh, subscribe for more. Otherwise, I'll see all of you in the next one. Bye-bye! Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to hit like on it and share it with your friends. Otherwise, hit subscribe for more awesomeness from the channel.